The human body is capable of making some amazing movements. But if our skeleton consists of bones, how are we able to move our limbs? This is because our skeletal system has various joints that connect our bones to each other. Let us take a look at the appendicular skeleton. It is attached to the axial skeleton and consists of the shoulder girdle, the pelvic girdle, the forelimbs and the hind limbs. There are a total of 126 bones in the appendicular skeleton. The forelimbs contain a long bone called the humerus in the upper arm. There are also two long bones in the lower arm, the radius, facing the direction of the thumb and the ulna. There are eight carpals or wrist bones in the wrist, five metacarpals in the palm, and 14 phalanges in our fingers. Thus, there are 27 separate bones in the human hand. The hind limbs contain the longest and strongest bone in the body, the femur or the thigh bone. The femur bears the weight of our body when we walk or run. The lower legs contain two bones, the inner tibia and the outer fibula. The tibia is also known as the shin. In addition to these bones, there are seven tarsal bones in the ankle, five long metatarsal bones in the middle of the foot and 14 phalanges in the toes of the human foot. However, our hind limbs have an additional bone referred to as the patella or the kneecap. It is a sesamoid bone that has developed from a tendon. The kneecap is joined to the lower end of the femur. The limbs of our body are all connected to girdles. The girdles articulate the limb bones to the axial skeleton. The shoulder or pectoral girdle consists of the scapula or the shoulder blade. The scapula is flat and triangular and lies on the upper ribs at the back on the thorax. The upper apex of the scapula bears a cup-like cavity called the glenoid cavity. The rounded upper head of the humerus fits into the glenoid cavity. On the raised portion of the scapula lies a curved bone known as the clavicle or the collarbone. The clavicle is the only long bone in the body that lies horizontally in the human body. It connects the scapula to the sternum. While the shoulder girdle connects our forelimbs to the axial skeleton, the hip girdle connects our hind limbs to the axial skeleton. The hip girdle is much stronger than the shoulder girdle and can bear more weight. The hip or pelvic girdle is large and trough shaped. It is formed by two hip bones that are joined medially to the sacrum. These hip bones are joined anteriorly at the pubic symphysis by hyaline cartilage. The hip bones are actually composed of three sections, the ilium, the ischium and the pubis. These sections are fused in adulthood but exist as separate bones in childhood. The pelvic girdle differs slightly in men and women. In men, the pubic arc of the pelvis is less than 90 degrees. However, in women, the pubic arc is greater than 90 degrees. This difference is to accommodate childbirth in women. An important portion of the hip girdle is a cavity called the acetabulum. 
the round head of the femur fits into this cavity. There is also another cavity in the hip girdle. This cavity referred to as the pelvic cavity is bounded by the bones of the pelvis. The pelvic cavity protects the abdominal organs and the reproductive organs. To understand how our limbs move and function smoothly, we must learn about the type of joints in the human body. The point at which two separate bones meet is called a joint. An immovable or fixed joint is a type of joint where no movement is possible between two bones. The sutures between different parts of the cranium are examples of immovable joints. Partially movable joints allow for very little movement between two bones. The intervertebral disc between two vertebrae is an example of this type of joint. Movable joints allow far greater movements than immovable and partially movable joints. There are three types of movable joints. The hinge joint is similar to the hinge of a door and allows for an opening and closing movement. The elbow joint between the humerus and the ulna is an example of the hinge joint. The joints between the bones of fingers and toes and the knee joint are also examples of hinge joints. The hinge joint usually gives sufficient power because there is less danger of twisting these joints. Gliding joints connect bones that have flat surfaces and glide over each other. The intervertebral discs in the spinal column are gliding joints. Gliding joints are also found in the wrist and ankles. In the case of the ball and socket joint, one end of a bone is rounded and ball-like and fits into a cup-like depression of another bone. Such joints allow for movement in various directions. The shoulder joint where the humerus fits into the glenoid cavity and the hip joint where the femur fits into the acetabulum are examples of ball and socket joints. In a pivot joint, one bone is rotated over a pivot-like end of another bone. For example, the pivotal joint between the atlas and the skull allows us to move our head in different directions. Because we use our joints so much, they need to be well lubricated. This prevents friction between the bone surfaces and reduces the effects of wear and tear. The lubricating fluid is called synovial fluid and the joint it is found in is referred to as a synovial joint. The knee joint is an example of a synovial joint. The synovial fluid is contained in a sac which serves as a cushion between the bones. These various joints allow us to use our limbs effectively. Together with girdles, they facilitate our movements.